Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video, doing JMA Friday for today's second video. So, as was on a Friday, but you might have had a look at uh, with Japanese and CFSB2 models. So, we'll see what both of these long range models have got to say about weather for the next four weeks, taking as well into July, of course, uh, for today's second video. Just to say that the first video uh, released uh, was the European Outlook. So, as was on a Friday, we've got our weather forecast weekend for Europe. There'll be lots of heavy showers and thunderstorms around in many parts of Europe in the week ahead. Pretty warm, though, in uh, most places. So have a look at uh, the European outlook and uh, see what's uh, happening in the weekend. We're going to have the uh, week to 10-day video update, or the 10 to 14-day video update with all the regular features that will be uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, right then, so let's get on with uh, Germany Friday. So uh, we're going to begin with the 500 middle bar height anomalies from the uh, North Pole view down, Arctic and North Pole view down. Uh, from the JMA. So here we go. This is the uh, North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just here. We've got the wider Arctic circle around there. And of course, we've got the mid latitudes around here. So uh, blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange, and red extrapolates to above average heights, which is high pressure. Uh, these are broken out into weak beers. <coughs> Excuse me, and the first week period will take us from the 12th through to the 19th of June. So the uh, coming week, we'll have high pressure sitting over Scandinavia and low pressure is going to be to our south. And that's going to leave us bringing in an easterly wind. That's going to be quite a warm wind. Warm winds uh, from the east, but uh, unsettled for the south, particularly with low pressure to our south and higher pressure. Yes, is away to the north and to the northeast. Go through to week two, which takes us from the uh, 19th through to the 26th of June. We maintain the high pressure over Scandinavia. The above average heights continue to be over Scandinavia. Below average heights are out to our west and southwest. And this leaves us pulling up like a southerly to southeasterly type wind. I think it may start to turn a little bit volatile uh, with that. You can busy some volatility, maybe the chance of some heavy showers and uh, possibly even some thunderstorms too. And then we're into week three and four. This will take us from the 26th of June through to the 10th of July. And if you're waiting for summer, this doesn't look particularly inspiring with a trough of below average height centered pretty much over top of the UK and also western parts of Europe. A jet stream going to be doing something like that around the trough. So we're on the cool side of the jet there. And uh, so that doesn't look particularly good at all. That looks cool and unsettled as we come to the end of June and into the uh, early part of July. Let's have a tropical and mid-latitude view is looking. So, of course, on this view, we can't see the Arctic and Greenland and Scandinavia, all those sort of areas there off the charts uh, up here. But we can see the mid-latitude view. We can see where the UK and Ireland is uh, up here in the top right hand of the chart as you are looking at it. So a reminder of the week one, 500 millibar height anomaly. We have high pressure up over Scandinavia, low pressure to our south. Winds are sort of coming in from an easterly direction. We'll bring the most unsettled conditions to the south and the driest conditions will be to the north. It's a warm week. These easterly winds are going to be pretty warm. So uh, temperature anomalies are above average, quite significantly so, between around 1 to 2 degrees above average. Many parts of uh, Europe, particularly northern Europe, having uh, a really warm week uh, as well. Uh, but it is a bit unsettled, especially so for England and Wales. So a bit of an all-south split for precipitation. Driest weather is in the north and wettest weather is down in the south. Moving through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 19th through to the 26th of June. Then we get low pressure uh, to our west and southwest. We can't see it. Well, we can see it a little bit over here. Uh, but uh, also up here, there's a ridge of high pressure. So you've got Scandinavian high up there. In between, probably squeezing in the winds from like a southeasterly type direction. Should still be pretty warm. Temperature anomalies are still above average. Not as much so as if within week one, but nevertheless, we're still on the warmer than average size. There's no problem with temperatures, but it is a bit unsettled with precipitation anomalies. Again, uh, above average, so warm and wet. Maybe, as I say, some volatility with a risk of some thunder. I'm going to go through to week three and four, which takes us from the 26th of June through to the 10th of July. And we have a trough of low pressure over the top of the country. Then quite a deep trough of low pressure is in over the top of the country. And that just looks quite unsettled. And I think with this one, we're beginning to move the jet stream southwards uh, as well. So uh, not particularly good signals at all for weeks three and four. 
actually the temperature anomaly is still just about managing to hold up okay. So there's no problem with temperatures, but it is unsettled with uh, rainfall going uh, above average, not just for the UK and Ireland, but for most parts of uh, Northern Europe as well. It does look like quite an unsettled uh, month to come, four weeks to come with the uh, JMA. Let's have a look and see what the CFS is uh, forecasting uh, next. So uh, here we go again. We've got uh, 500 millibar heights breaking down into weekly peers. The first weekly peer is going to take us from the 12th through to the 18th of June. The uh, coming week has high pressure over Scandinavia and also out to our west. Below average heights are down to the south. Winds are in from the east. Both models have got good agreement about high pressure being to the northeast, low pressure to the south, southwest in the weekend. Winds are in from the east, so it's warm, but it could be quite unsettled. Go through to week two, and this is a change on what the JMA is showing. This is the 19th to the 25th of June. The CFS then has the high pressure should be above average heights taking control. Uh, with uh, low pressure sinking away to the south into southern parts of Europe. Winds are still in from the east, so it should still be warm. But it's a, that's a more settled scenario, particularly for northern areas. But I think all areas would actually see uh, drier weather with that. So that's potentially summer uh, getting going there, if the CFS is right. Again, it is in, uh, uh, the JMA and the CFS are not in agreement about this. So as early as week two, we have got disagreement today between the JMA and the CFS V2. Uh, week three is the 26th, let's highlight it, it's the 26th of June to the 2nd of July. The Scandinavian high is still there and still bringing in the winds from the east. A little bit weaker with the ridge now though, so we've got some low pressure up here. Might just be turning a little bit more unsettled again there. 26th of June, 2nd of July, that could just be a little bit more unsettled. Should still be quite warm. I think the air will still be coming up even then in like a southerly type direction. Um, but uh, I think it could be a little bit more unsettled, maybe a bit showering. Uh, but then there's another change for week four. This is the uh, 3rd to the 9th of July. And uh, still with this Scandinavian high idea, the surface is really going to town for Scandinavian high uh, today. But this time it's much closer to us. So again, this brings us drier weather and should be hot, I would have thought with that. I think that could be quite a hot scenario as we get through to the 3rd to the 9th of July. Says they're talking a lot more anticyclonic here than uh, the JMA from as early, can you believe it, as week two. Week 1 temperature anomalies with the CFS from the 12th to the 18th of June are uh, significantly warm than average. We're going to have these warm easterly winds, of course, so no problems with temperatures at all. Go through to week 2, which is the 19th to 25th of June, and again, it is quite substantially uh, above average in that week too. Week three also looks warmer than average. This is the 26th of uh, June to the 2nd of July. That one is warmer than average. And then week four, again, we're warmer than average in all weeks. And uh, week four rounds it all off. It's preferred to the 9th of July. That one is above average too. By around a degree, it's not a, not a very hot sort of four weeks coming up. But most of these anomalies are like one to one and a half degrees above average, I think. So yes, certainly, uh, certainly a warm four weeks being forecast by CFSB2 today. Uh, and then final precipitation, so week one rainfall anomalies from the 12th to the 18th of June, a bit wetter than average to ourselves, driving average to the north, that's indicative of high pressure being to our northeast, low pressure being to our south. Uh, if anything, when we get through to week two, we're probably edging towards drier conditions, so it's 19th, 25th of June, possibly looking a little bit drier uh, than down in the south. Near average precipitation for week three, that's 26th of June, 2nd of July. And then week four, it's rounding it off. And again, near average precipitation, 3rd to 9th of July. I think the model is weakening with its signal. But I would have thought it's likely to be uh, pretty dry bare through uh, those, uh, those couple of weeks, probably. Okay, so uh, quite an interesting JMA this week. They're both in agreement, um, JMA Friday, they're both in agreement uh, for high pressure to be over Scandinavia and low pressure to be to our south in the weekend. That brings in the easy winds that can be warm, very warm. There will be chance of thunder down in the south. From week two, we've got disagreement. The JMA is definitely more unsettled, as we've very firmly established here. JMA definitely more unsettled for week two and particularly for weeks three and four, which is uh, parking a big trough of low pressure over top of the coach. So obviously that's going to be a really unsettled scenario. But the CFS is much more anticyclonic with this, especially in weeks two and weeks four. Could be a bit of a showery interruption in week three. 
But I think definitely the CFS is the drier and the warmer of the two. And in fact, the CFS would probably suggest that uh, summer gets back underway during the second half of, Ju of June. And uh, probably is uh, is still uh, getting going and uh, is still with us as we go into July. The JMA looks much cooler and much more unsettled. As ever, it's just a snapshot of what these two models are showing. So it's not to be uh, relied upon uh, at all. Anything over five, seven days is uh, is fraught with health warnings. But that's what they're showing today. Big, big, big disagreements uh, for JMA Friday this week. And uh, it's indicative of all the chopping and changing that we've been seeing the shorter range model output lately uh, as well. So it's not surprising that with the short range in such disarray that the longer range is also in uh, disarray. And all we can do is just wait to see how it uh, sort of uh, re resolves itself and sorts itself out. OK, so that's Janet Friday done. We'll be back later on with your week's 10-day video update, including all of the regular features. We'll probably have a live stream tonight sometime around a half 10, something like that, where we can all uh, just see how we're doing and ease you into your, uh, into your uh, weekend. So uh, that will be later on uh, tonight. But, uh, yeah, we've got week 10-day video update coming up next. But for Janet Friday for this week, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.